Hey friends, today I'm going to be showing you how I made my EVA foam Midna helmet. If you're here from the Etsy pattern, go ahead and skip to the section titled tutorial if you have questions about how to put it together. So whenever I make a pattern for cosplay, I usually start it out the same way. I collect a bunch of reference images. In this case, I'm just using a reference image of Midna herself and trying to plan out the helmet. In this case, because Midna's helmet is asymmetrical, I ended up starting after the draft by taking a bunch of different head and face measurements to determine how I wanted the helmet to sit on me because one eye shows, one eye doesn't, and I wanted it to match as much as possible to Midna's helmet, but also still be functional for a human head since it's quite different. So after I've sketched out my rough idea and I've collected all of my measurements, I just start drafting it on paper. Um, EVA foam, at least to me, is pretty expensive and you never want to waste it. You always want to try to just get it on your first time if possible. So I always make my patterns out of paper first since that's cheapest. And then after I cut those patterns out, I'll try them on one at a time to make sure that they're fitting as expected. As you can see here, I didn't like how the top of the crown fits, so I actually shortened it so that the um, horns would not wrap around as much. After you test and cut out your paper pattern, I highly recommend making a cardboard version. Uh, this will be a little bit thicker. It will allow it to sit more like the foam will, and you'll get to see a better example of what it will look like. This also ensures one more step that your pattern is good before you start cutting it out of the foam. Yes, this may not be the most fun part of making a pattern, but it'll ensure that it comes out just the way you want and fit perfect to your size. So this next section will show you all of how I put it together, but it's primarily meant as instructions for those who are following the Etsy pattern I provided. So after you've printed out the pattern, you want to make sure that all of the black sections line up and they don't have overlap. There should be no overlap between any of the inked sections in this pattern. If your pattern comes out just slightly wonky like mine here, don't worry about it. Just try to cut it as straight as possible. You can see that I removed the tape, reapplied it, and made sure that my lines were straight. You can also fold it in half so that the lines overlap, not the paper seams overlap, and you should see that both horns are perfectly overlapping. That will tell you that the pattern is well put together. So for my version of the headpiece, I am cutting it out of 10 millimeter or one centimeter EVA foam. I have it pinned down because it's easier to trace. That way it doesn't move around and your pattern doesn't get jarred. After you do that, I recommend putting indentations into the foam where all of the tribal looking patterns are. This will ensure an easier guide later when you're trying to cut them out or make those indentations. I check quickly to make sure that quality assurance agrees with my pattern, and it seems like he does. So for making those indentations, I chose to use a soldering iron and cut them in once it was hot. Here's an example of what it looks like. It's a lot more challenging than it sounds. You can also do this with a Dremel or an X-Acto knife, but I tried those first and uh, both had poor performance, so I decided to go with the soldering iron in order to cut in my impressions. Now, this is a multi-use pattern, so go ahead and cut out your snakes, trace those onto foam as well. For this, I used six millimeter foam, but it's totally up to you. I'm lining them up to make sure that they look good to me, but I'm not gluing them on yet. So that's it for the crown. Now we're gonna move on to the base. The base is pretty easy. The first thing is we're just gonna cut out the first large piece and test that it fits. The top piece of the base, we're just going to cut this out. You can pretty much ignore what I'm saying in this video because I altered the pattern to make it easier for you so you wouldn't have to think about where the cutouts should go. The pattern is already set for you. And I recommend cutting out the pattern with the included extra width needed in case your head is larger, just to see that it fits. And then if you don't need it, you can always cut it away. And then here's a quick example of the top and bottom taped together just to see how it would look. It is not glued together yet because we still need to make those indentations. Next, you can see I traced and then cut out the indentations with the soldering iron again. Once we do that, we're gonna start gluing the base together. So I use contact cement, which is what I highly recommend for all EVA foam. And then you just put it on the back 
Put it on both edges and then wait until it's tacky or slightly dry before trying to stick it together. After the bottom of the base is glued together, we're going to attach the top. The way I did this and the way I recommend is by putting glue all the way around on the bottom and lining up the seams instead of gluing the top together and then attaching it. Now we can see it's assembled. And if you look at it from the side, you should see that the top angles in just slightly. Really quick, something I forgot to show in the video is that there is a band connecting the top and bottom of the base pieces. This also helps to hide the seam. This is included in the pattern and is the long curved thin piece of the pattern. We're gonna cut that out and then glue it to the head so that there is a gap just in the front of the base piece of the helmet. Make sure when you glue it on that the shorter edge of the curve is facing up. The next thing I did is mark the exact middle on both the bottom and the top of the crown, the front piece, so that I would know exactly how to line these up. After we've done all that, just apply some contact cement again to the base of the helmet and the edge of the crown, and then we will attach them as so. Now, before we attach the crown, the part with the horns, so to speak, we want to heat shape it or heat form it so that it wraps to the head. If we just attach it and glue it now, it'll just glue flat on and won't look correctly. So what I recommend for this is just heating up the whole thing with a heat gun and slowly bending it from the inside outward. That way your horns sort of curve with the base of the helmet as well. How far up or down you attach it is up to you but this is how I did it so that the bottom edge of the crown, the pointy end, ended up lining up pretty much with the base of the helmet where the eye is. Next thing we're gonna do is finally glue the snakes on. The reason we didn't glue these on before is because the helmet was still flat, it wasn't rounded. So if you'd glued them on and then tried to round it, it would displace the snakes or break the glue bonds. It just wouldn't look right. So go ahead and glue the snakes on. Finally, we can see this is what the helmet looks like, mostly constructed. Again, this is a multi-use pattern, so go ahead and cut out the eye in the front and the back and go ahead and glue those on. Finally, I'm gonna use some modeling foam that you can find at any art store or online. I've put a link below. And this I use to wrap around the eye as well as do some additional details on the front of the helmet. This was my first time using this stuff and I made a mistake by pinning it in place this foam will change shape slightly uh, and it, it, it does move and expand in certain areas. So what I actually recommend is once you've had it rolled out, go ahead and put down a thin layer of water using just a Q-tip and the modeling foam will stick to that. And the final step before we paint it is to cover it in Plasti Dip. I use a lot of this and it makes an excellent sealer. It looks very smooth and the sealer has done its job wonderfully. I chose to paint it a dark gray. And here is the finished helmet. It's a dark bluish gray with neon orange filled in in the indentations where I use the soldering iron. All right, so a couple things that I wanna mention about making the helmet. Um, the first thing is that I consider my head reasonably large. At the largest point, it's 58 centimeters circumference, right? So when I made the pattern, I made it per my head, but I added a little bit extra. In the pattern, you'll see that there's a little bit extra add for bigger head. So first thing is, I also made this out of um, 10 millimeter foam, one centimeter foam. So the thickness, if you decide to make it a little bit thinner, the pattern without the extra will probably work. If you make it for us out of six or eight millimeter foam, mine's a little bit thicker because I like the chunky sort of look, it makes it look more like stone. But if you make it out of six or eight millimeter, um, you probably don't need the extra. Of course, I would cut the pattern with the extra always, test it out, see how it fits, um, and then make a decision because it's easier to cut it away than add it back. So that's the first thing. If you make it out of 10 millimeter foam, like I did, um, consider using it, cutting the pattern to the extra, seeing how it fits and then going from there. If you make it thinner, you can probably cut it off. Another thing that I'll mention is how you paint it is totally up to you. I show the paints that I used in the video and I chose to give it this neon orangey kind of look. This is obviously not accurate um, to the game, but I like the way it looks. That's all the detailing I did. 
I elected not to do any painting on the snakes and no painting on the eye in the back either. That's just the way I wanted it. But again, how you paint it is gonna to be totally up to you. So the last thing and probably important that I mention, um, the way this hangs on, right now you can see there's nothing across the top. Um, I don't have a wig coming out, anything like that. So the way this stays on currently, there's two ways, right? Either it's really tight and it fits based on just the tension around your head and sits there, it won't fall off. So right now it presses slightly against the back of my head and basically against my brow right here. That's how it stays on. So my ears, I could add in ears if I wanted to, um, but also it doesn't hurt your ears because it doesn't sit on them, which was my preference. So there's three ways to handle this, right? You can have the tension like I do, where I have it on the brow and the back, um, just make sure it's not significant because you'll give yourself a headache. That's how I'm choosing to wear it so it stays up. The other way that you can do it, and especially if you make it out of thinner foam, what might happen is it'll slide down and sit on your ears. If you make it out of thinner foam, um, that might be okay. And if your head's a little bit thinner, that might be all right, but I don't want it sitting on my ears and that also eliminates the possibility of me wearing, you know, pointed ears for midna or midno um, as I'm gonna be doing it. So that's the other way. The last way that you could uh, find a way for it to sit is make it a little bit bigger using the extra width for big head pattern right on the pattern. And then what you do is on the inside, you just add a little cross bar, right? A little arced piece of foam that you glue in place so that when you put it on, the thing that's actually stopping it from falling down your head is that little bar that you glued across the top on the inside that you won't see. So that's another option to keep it up. I will leave it up to you, but like I said, I currently use the tension on my forehead to do it. And that also gives me plenty of space to do a wig or whatever else I'm gonna do from there. But that is the helmet. That's how I made it. Those are my recommendations. Please feel free to leave me any comments if you like or questions. Um, I'm happy to help you out if the video did not include enough detail, um, especially if you purchased the pattern and helped me out. Thank you. Um, you can just send me comments on Etsy. You can send me comments on YouTube uh, or Instagram, Justin on screen, and I'll help you out so that you can have a cool helmet just in time for con. Thanks for watching. See ya.